Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so my name is Lotan. I am really excited to be here today. I am a radio presenter by profession, but the best version of me is that I am a farmer. So today we are all talking from the same sort of level. On behalf of Pascal's board and management, our partners, Kabe, and Alternative Africa, Kenya's Potato Council, the CEO is speaking. Please accept our very warm good morning from Nairobi and accept our cordial welcome to this two days conference on youth employment in Kenya's potato and mango value chains. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our donor, Hewlett Foundation, for their generous funding and support for this project. Without them, we would not all be here today. Please accord them a round of applause to recognize and I appreciate Hewlett Foundation's support. Without them, we will not be drinking tea, I will not be holding this mic, we will not have traveled to be where we are. Apart from Hewlett, we also have a number of donors who support our work. And I will also take this opportunity to recognize them, starting with the Carnegie Corporation of New York, who have supported our work in different ways, MasterCard Foundation, the Open Society, and FCBO, who have generously supported Pasca work over the years. Africa's demographic dividend can be both a blessing and a curse. Africa is the only region in the world right now that is going through that transition. Asia and the others, they are now aging. Us, we are blooming. If we collectively fail to address two twin challenges that are steadily the reality of an average youth in many countries in Africa. These challenges are unemployment and underemployment. If these two challenges are not addressed, the demographic dividend can not only be an intergenerational curse, but also a time ticking bomb in many respects. Begin to do a, mind, a mindset shift that looks at unemployment as a resource. If you go into a room and you have a hundred unemployed young people, in order to move forward, if we look at them as a problem, we are likely not to go far. But if we look at them as an opportunity to create something, we are likely to engage them better. So that's a paradigm shift as a way of reflection I would like us to consider. The second paradigm shift that I would like us to consider as we have this dialogue is to shift from viewing government as an employment bureau. For many think that a government has bottomless pit of jobs. The solution to unemployment is growing the economy and multiplying opportunities through which young people will find employment. The fourth area paradigm that I would like to call on us to challenge is that it is not the responsibility of government to grow the economy, but it is a partnership between the people of that country and the government to create an environment through which the economy grows. Because when government is held responsible for growing the economy, the private sector, our main driver of how economies of the world grow, becomes a passive observant in a process that it should be at the center. We must find a way through these conversations that we have as a Utafiti Sera to begin to influence public policy and to begin to influence the programs that emerge and to begin to influence the project that take place. The National Stakeholders a Forum that is being put together by the CS for National Treasury and Planning has seen the need to put the Council of Governors as a stakeholder at the national level and not only engage with the counties at the county level. We must be involved in shaping what is the national policy direction in that regard. We believe that opportunities lie in agriculture but that will not go far until and unless we do what I would call a value change, attitude change, and mindset change. I really want to begin by saying a huge thank you to all of you for finding time. I know you're very busy. I know you're very engaged. By putting aside your everyday work and engagement, be they family, be they education, 
be they the new venture, the new innovation that you're trying to just set up to come and join us for this important conversation. We want to say thank you. We have an excellent and a well richly developed program for you today and we hope that it will be a program that can excite your participation, can get your juices running and importantly that you will have the space to contribute to the learning, to the sharing, to the networking. Okay, so we hope that this is not going to be your usual conference. This is going to be an opportunity for the youth to be youth. Okay, it is going to be an opportunity for the youth to express themselves as vocally as they can, as loudly as they can. It is going to be an opportunity for you to network, to know and learn from each other about what each of us is doing in their own spaces. There is a lot of money in agriculture. We intend to intensify or diversify methods of utilization of potato. We need partnerships, we need sharing, we need holding each other's hand. And as Washira said, he is ready to partner with any young person who wants to aspire to be an agri-entrepreneur. The next generation of Africa's billionaires will be from the agricultural sector. Those are not my words. I am quoting the AFDB president, Mr. Adesina Akibumi. And he says that the next generation of Africa's billionaire will not be from the oil sector, but they will be from the agricultural sector. And the numbers speak for themselves. The African market to be explored is presently 1.2 billion. And by 2050, we will have an African market of 2.5 billion. Presently, the gross GDP of Africa stands at 2.5 trillion. 80% of Africa's labor is employed in agriculture, manufacturing, and the service industry. But guess what? It is growing at less than 2.5% annually. Right here in Kenya, agriculture employs 30% directly and 27% indirectly annually. Yet you will find that small scaleholder farmers as well as pastoralists who greatly contribute to the livestock value chain are not considered wage or rather contributors to, the, to wage employment when you look at the economic service by KNBS, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Presently in Kenya, agro-processing, rather the share of agro-processing in Kenya is at 16% of exports compared to 57% imports. 91% of agri-exports are actually sold raw or semi-processed. You are drowning in an ocean of opportunities. And these opportunities have presented themselves as challenges. We are here today as Utafiti Sarah to say, with West Pokot, Nyandarwa Youth, and Makweni Youth as our points of contact, we are here to say that these opportunities are indeed there. And through this Utafiti Sarah process, we have gathered evidence to prove that these opportunities are actually there. The private sector of Kenya is committed to ensuring that employment is created and jobs are created through agriculture, agro-processing, and agro-innovation. As we're talking now, there's a directive to all primary schools that they must establish the 4K clubs. Both public and private primary schools have been directed to establish uh, those clubs. And you can imagine the multiply effect. If all those uh, primary schools have those clubs in place and they uh, have uh, those active clubs and the kids are members of those clubs, as they grow up, as they come out of those primary schools, they move to the secondary schools where we have the young farmers clubs and then they finally get out of uh, school, what we call the out of school youth. You can imagine the impact. We already have a youth which is sensitized, socialized at that tender age to be able to appreciate and acknowledge that uh, 
there are a lot of opportunities in the agriculture sector. When we look at the potato value chain, it is not that we are not producing enough wear potato. It is that we are not producing enough certified seed, which determines the quality and the yield of, of course, the wear potato. Under what circumstances would one say we are not producing enough? Is it uh, after assessing the market? Uh, what is the benchmark there? Because when you go to the United States, what do they have done and whether this in fact could be a clue to what Kenya needs to do, they have set up commodities exchange so that production and consumption are linked at the commodities exchange where production is undertaken after the market has dictated the type, the quality, the configurations of what they would want. Kindly identify your market, know what the market needs, then produce according to those uh, market needs. You'll make it. We must address the issue of access to quality seed. So far, so good. We are doing a, a good job on uh, seed production. Unlike uh, some years back, where we used to have a few seed uh, producers and multipliers. But of late, the number is coming up to support uh, potato farmers. For the value chain that KFC falls under, uh, it is they use frozen chips. And frozen chips uh, market has not been developed in the country, if we are realistic. In the recent um, uh, past, we have seen the people getting interested in the product from KFC, and therefore that market is growing. And therefore, this is the high time to build that very chain of cold, cold chain, let's say. There are some areas we need to look into. Tax regime for inputs and the duty for machinery and equipment for processing. Under the, um, the KEPSA Foundation, there is a youth platform that will soon be launched called the Youth in Enterprise Forum, of which together with the National Potato Council, we formed a group of young people uh, who we call the Potato Crew. Now in this group you've got young people right from propagation, which is um, seed, seed propagation, both the lab kind of seedling um, for apical cuttings, right? Uh, all the way to, to the market. When you go to Mexico, the crop called maize has 600 products that come from that maize. When you come to Kenya, it has only 11. How do we ensure that the science around the potato is informing even the processing components? If you look at maize, for example, it produces better starch that is being used in hospitals and elsewhere then you'll use it for just selling uh, for Ugali. We have the Enable Youth Kenya program, one of us has just mentioned it, and uh, there are so many opportunities uh, within that program. The program is uh, funded by ADB and the GOK, and they're targeting youth uh, with uh, innovating, innovative financing at 0% and 5%. I'm sure there's no other institution which gives uh, loans to the youth at that, uh, at that rate. Uh, we also have an RGF risk guarantee fund to cushion financial institutions which are reluctant to give out loans uh, to the youth. So kindly, probably you wish to talk to Alice who works uh, in that uh, program and she'll be able to give you more information. The people you're meeting today, the people from the different organizations and the different sectors, when you interact with them, you create your own database of information on how to explore the opportunity. There's the traditional platforms where we are saying in social media where you're going to groups. There are of course these WhatsApp groups that are formed along various value chains. Utafiti Sera creates an environment in which dialogue can occur. Okay? 
that dialogue is in a respectful, trustful environment in which everyone's voice is important. Not just Eric's, not just mine, not just where there are us, but every person in this room. We included youth in Makueni, youth in West Pokot, youth in Nyandarwa, and created forums for multiple ways of fading back to them so that they can be able to let us know is our evidence, is our research still making sense to them. So continuous engagement is important. An important thing that I think we need to try and do and which I think Utrafiti Sera has done really well is to sort of, let me use the term shepherd, to lead these multiple stakeholders towards a consensus around what is best for them. That can only occur when you allow for respectful voices to thrive, that can only occur when you provide multiple flo- uh, platforms for uh, engagement, including Facebook, including Twitter, including radio, for instance. I long to go to Radio Ghetto, Ghetto Radio, and talk about these things and learn share and communicate my research uh, using share. These young people can co create. They have a lot of ideas, they are innovators, they are creators. And if we enable them to manage their own information platform, that would be great. I can get to admit that often research may feel very far removed from, again, everyday realities of, should I say, communities or demographies which have been researched. And maybe the challenge to researchers will be to maybe think through methodologies which are more participatory in nature. And, uh, for example, participatory action research has been in development discourses for, for a minute. What more can be done? Yes, there's certain kind of information you can get from surveys and FGTs. The policymakers consider the political environment to assess whether the evidence suits the government needs. Sometimes when we talk about policy influence, we focus so much on what is missing until sometimes we forget to look back at what we have. And uh, sometimes we focus so much on the fact that the car has no fuel, we forget at least we have a car. For youth to first of all understand the opportunities in the agriculture sector, it's important to appreciate that you cannot thrive as a business ignorant of the policy space. And in the era of globalization, you don't just need to be concerned about what is happening at home. You need to be keen for us in the East African community region. What does a a policy decision in Tanzania or Uganda mean for you as an enterprise here? We need technologies that um, can be able to work on these innovations or products locally. But recently again, we have another technology called apical cuttings. And uh, that one again shortens the period because you cut the um, part of the shoot of the plant, plant it, the one you've cut will produce others, and then after two weeks you cut them, you plant them as mother plant again, they produce more, and within a short time you have enough mother plants to give you now apical cuttings that you plant in a tray and finally you transplant to the farm or you sell to other farmers, to go and produce seed. The youth uh, should be and are the change engines when it comes to agriculture. If we are going to adopt the different methods of uh, doing our agriculture from the traditional methods, we need to involve the youth. They are so critical. Their numbers are so high. Uh, We keep saying, shamba, si ushamba. We are looking for opportunities, even as a government, through policies to encourage and come up with positions that are targeted towards um, empowering uh, the youth. Enable Youth is targeting 2,080 youth to become agripreneurs. The word enable, as it sounds, it's an acronym. It is Empowering Novel Agribusiness-Led Employment. We run advertisements and we are in the second cycle. I'm sure there are some who are here who have seen those advertisements. We are in the second cycle. Shortlisting is happening, and we are going to do another one in in July. I hope you learned something new because I did. Uh, So you can all agree with me that today has been, uh, for lack of a better word, a fruitful day. Yeah, 
we already know the problems that are ailing us in our various value chains. We have the solutions right here. I have heard, I have seen, and I'm here to experience some of these solutions. Welcome again for today's event, the second day of our conference. Yesterday was quite powerful, a lot of engagements. Thank you very much for being active participants. And I think today, as we wind up this conference, it's going to be even more hot. Financial uh, resources are not the main issue. To me, the biggest problem is mentorship. What happens to our youth? We are always saying you should go into business. Where are they mentored? To me, there's a big disconnect. I come from Kitale, where we are the renowned food basket uh, county. But our production is dipping. Those powerful families that reign the county's economy are no more. So the issue really is the, how do we create smooth generational transition? Evidence research, on one hand, without very clear policy actions, I think may not be of a lot of help. For our use to be successful in business, and uh, that is along the two value chains, or the other agricultural value chains, there has to be proper incubation. And that can't come without a budget. We still need to put in place proper incubation for use to make sure that they see it as a business. And you see, it's not a matter of just seeing it as a business, but uh, doing business with the, along the value chains. Most of us did not know why, do not know even today why KFC uh, imports uh, the potatoes that we eat from Egypt and the Middle East and we haven't solved that problem uh, which is my way of saying the point about mentorship the point about incubation the point about understanding why agriculture in general it should be a central concern of all youth is important there are some countries in Africa where if you want to learn about agriculture and agricultural productivity you have to fly out to find suitable environments where they practice agriculture. I think are thinking too much about doing business from agri our agricultural products with outsiders when we haven't exploited the potential for consumption here. I think the government still needs to do more to cascade all those programs downwards. It is my urge to the government to really be serious in implementation of Maputo Declaration. We know um, quite a number of agricultural produce can be dried. And all the youth know that. But once they start drying, they are dried in the wrong direction. They are dried and they cannot meet the market standards. Mindset change starts not only from down ones, even from policy makers and budget making. More importantly by the government, national government and county government. They need to allocate more money to agriculture. We are doing standards with CAPS uh, for starch. We started last year, we are working on it. Basically, what Madam Alice is saying, you must have a bankable proposal. 
she's also gone ahead to break down what a bankable proposal looks like. One, she has mentioned access to markets. She has also mentioned financial projections, understanding the technicalities of your business. For example, you have a good product, but have you tested it in the market? You know, it may be good for you and nobody else. Maybe no one else is interested in your, in your product or they are interested, but they would want you to make some few, some few changes here and there for it to be a valuable product uh, to, to the market. Savings is a prerequisite to investments. If you want to make money and create wealth, root for problems. That's not contradictory. Root for problems. If you want to make money and create wealth, group for problems. When you do that and you get to solve those problems, you will make money, you will create wealth. And I think if you get into those challenges, then start wondering what you can do about them. That is where the jobs are. At the end of the day, the government and whoever is loaning you, you need to organize yourself in such a way that you are traceable if you are given money, because you are given money to pay. So we started the mobilization of a group. We didn't have any records. Uh, we started on our own uh, group and uh, started uh, uh, contributing and borrowing money from the group. And we opened a bank account. We had a statement. So at the end of the day, we qualified for a loan. It takes a process and needs some good organization. The Enable Youth Kenya program is a whole model of what you have been, we have been discussing here. It is having an incubation it's actually a model on, on incubation to ensure that the youth are capacity built in terms of skills and knowledge. And then there is mentorship, hard holding, you know, mentorship through hard holding and coaching. After that, you are supported to develop a bankable business plan or a bankable proposal. And after you develop the bankable proposal, you're afforded to the AFC. The Minister of Agriculture, we have negotiated that there is no coracle for those loans. As a Minister of Agriculture, we have negotiated. We have put our foot down and we are told the AFC that these young people have no coracle. Incubation and training and the bankable proposal which we work on with you is your coracle. Every lender and every financial institution, even including the government, considers you as a very risky person to be lent money. But I believe there is one way we can have or we can change that perception through partnerships, public-private partnerships. Let's have bodies that stand for the youth and act as their securities, organizations that act as securities for the youth, like uh, Enable Kenya. You see credit for the youth from AFC. We need more of that. A youth who cannot prove to be worthwhile to AFC through their proposals need to prove it to a viable organization that will provide uh, extension services, guidance and evaluate their plan, their work, their businesses, then help them source finances from the government and other entities. Money is important, but knowledge about money and about leadership and about listening and about partnership was more than money. What do financiers look for when leading money to youth? The first point to, that we touch is CRB. Imezuia wengi sana kwa vijana kupata loan. Kwa manake wengi wanazuiliwa kupata yo loan kwa sababu wameshindo kulipa ile kidogo kwa CRB ile kubo wanaeza kweli. So, the bank check if they fail to pay the 500 shillings on CRB, how then will pay the 100,000 shillings? Focus on what uh, investors look for to claim stake in local businesses. We identified that uh, there's a whole lot of opportunities here in Africa that international investors are looking at. So uh, there's a need for local businesses to tailor our products to the global market so that we can get uh, international funding. There's a need for us as local businesses and local business owners to tailor our products so that it's international and it's global so that when we present in these forums, 
you can get uh, the required funding. Make sure that your your business idea has a continuity. You shouldn't be having defaulters or having records of having defaulted. So as a group or an individual, at least make sure that there is worthness in your business. Right now, 70% of the world's uh, food is being produced by smallholder farmers. Whether it's being done in Africa or outside Africa, 70% is being done by smallholder farmers. In Kenya, we all know that statistic, agriculture contributes ab about 26%. And you says that by 2050, we will have, it's actually 2.5 billion people in Africa to feed. And also we know that Africa, I think they were, uh, they were mixed up, uh, about 500 million people will be joining the job market by 2050 in Africa alone. And ideally we know that uh, agriculture provides 70% of the jobs, either directly or indirectly. In my experience, when you go to the space of digitizing agricultural value chains, especially when it comes to the youth, everyone wants to create an app. And we also have IVR, which can be can be used. It can tell you about fertilizer. So we basically put uh, a lot of agricultural information to that. You see, that is very useful for a farmer who is illiterate, does not know how to read, does not know how to write. Truly not so many people are able to create an app. And if we create this an app, not so many people know how to, to go about the the whole process of digitizing the agriculture. I know when we talk about digitizing agriculture, we are talking about using uh, the digital tools and we have so many digital tools in the in the entire agricultural value chains and you see most of us don't have the access to these apps. What NPCK have done in the counties is that you're working with a farm service provider so that they can be able to help even the old to log in on the platform. Right now we have 100,000 registered uh, farmers on the platform. They can be able to book for seed for the next season they can be able to procure inputs, they can be able to access markets on the same platform. And they can also be able to access weather information, uh, pest and disease management, and uh, key inputs along the value chain. Aggregation can best be done by what NPCK is doing, where they're aggregating sprayers, they're aggregating farmers, they're aggregating demand, and, all, and then linking all those opportunities to individuals. For blockchain, the best place to play at is a traceability. People need to trust the system that if I check on this particular system that is built on blockchain, then I know this is true. Because in blockchain, you can only enter data, you cannot edit. The reason why tech alone cannot stand on its own when you're going to farmers is because tech is used to enable activities at the farming level. So you'd find that you cannot use tech alone, sit back and have the app and let the farmers use it. You have to send someone. If you just do mapping, I think you can be able to solve that issue. So that when one area is harvesting, it's not all of us harvesting. When one area finishes harvesting, we are starting the other one. So we'll have supply of potato practically. We can have supply of potato practically all year round. We can be able to borrow from the best practices elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, flower industry in Kenya, it is working very well. We can be able to replicate that uh, in the potato industry. And we can also be able to borrow from other countries that are excelling in the industry. We have had two wonderful days of deep conversations of really, really deep conversations. Personally, I have learned a lot, but I want to express my own personal gratitude to all of you for the amazing work, for the amazing commitment, for the amazing opportunity to engage with you, to interact with you, to learn from you. We feel very blessed to have leaders who keep a special and warm place in their hearts for the youth. We were grateful for all the policies and incentives that we learned have been put in place, both at national and county level. From their messages, we are confident that they will expand opportunities that you will benefit from in the agricultural sector. I urge you to run with these ideas to prosperity. From Pokot, Nyandarwa, Makueni, Nakuru, Nyeri, Taita, Taveta. You spoke and we listened. We take your feedback very seriously. We'll do our very best to make this platform and PASGA serve you best.
keep the conversation going people to people people to platform people to pasga people to organizations